Without any ado, let me introduce you to the quirky little Ubco 2x2 adventure. It looks odd because of that tubular frame that you can essentially just strap things to any way you want. And it also rides weirdly because it is two-wheel drive. It has two motors, front wheel, rear wheel, and yes, that does feel as strange as it sounds. Let's get muddy. Oh, there she is. There she is. What a beaut. Look at that white finish. Yeah, you're fine too. You just stay there and chill out. But this thing is kind of fascinating, actually. It's two-wheel drive. We have a motor on the rear and a motor on the front. And as far as I can tell, they look like they're the same. So I'm assuming that's the same kind of power output. But this is two by two utility bike, two by two. There we go. Two motors, nice knobbly tires as well. I'm assuming they can handle a certain amount of abuse. And then we've got all of these kind of mounting points on it, trellis frame, so you can stick stuff kind of anywhere and take it practically anywhere you want. I was told to go this way, which I've done. And I was also told to go left at a certain point up here. Oh yeah. Oh god, this was a mistake, wasn't it? Okay, well it's not going back clean. If I if I really crack that throttle now, I'm gonna have a massive shit streak up my back. Uh, so I'm not gonna do it. I don't want to look like I've crapped myself. I don't think anyone's really paying that much attention to the specs. It's not really competing with anything. I can't personally think of anything to compare it to. So I only really had one expectation to live up to for me and that was to be fun. And I have to say, box ticked. It was really fun. Oh no, <laughs> here comes the mud. Oh no. Oh yeah, let's at least close the visor and let's test the speed. Going uphill, but let's test the speed. Right. 25, 26 miles an hour. I forgot there's no rear brake on my foot. I'm just gonna take a second to point out a few things. Firstly, if you ever get this thing stuck, that is easy to pick up. It's super duper light. Second thing is that the turning circle is also kind of bonkers. This is akin to a mountain bike with a motor. So you've got your rear brake there, front brake there, as you would on a mountain bike you haven't really got a kind of stopping point on the headstock it feels like that's just where the cables limit it and then the weirdest thing and i was warned obviously because it's got two motors and the front wheel is pulling it as well as the rear wheel pushing it it feels i guess like if you were to tow a motorcycle and your front wheel is just getting dragged away from you that is an adjustment that takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around the only thing i would say about this being considered an off-road bike or if you were considering to take it off-road is that if you want to stand up on the pegs and you can do it the bars are a little too low or a little lower then I would personally enjoy them for best stability it feels like you have to stoop over a little bit so if you get on the really tricky stuff and you need to stand out of that seat it's uh, a little tough. Rear brake feels stronger to me than the front. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Which I can kind of see why they would do that. It's just worth taking note of. Suspension's quite nice as well. It's real bouncy, but it is just soaking all of this up. Oh God. Oh God. That's where it starts to go over that ridge, where it goes over the spine of the uh, of the divot that it starts to worry me standing up yeah it feels like it you know it doesn't actually feel like it adds much stability on this bike in particular i know ideally if you're doing any off-road you need to be comfortable with that but actually because the suspension's so good i feel like i can just ride it out in the seat in the saddle that's a big old puddle let's go around it ooh, ooh. Conducting itself well, such grace, such poise, like a mountain goat. Oh no, 
Yeah. Stuff to get used to, it is quite stubby. Your hands are sort of wrapped back to you, so you can't really stand up either, they're quite low. Uh, if you're doing proper adventure riding, typically you would want to be standing up on the pegs, um, so your arms are a little bit freer as well, and you've got a bit more room to move on the bike. This isn't the kind of bike you would do that with because your arms are quite low. But if you sit in the seat, in the saddle, it is quite forgiving. The suspension is quite soft, uh, and actually it felt more than stable just sitting in the seat rather than standing up. I didn't feel like I necessarily needed to on the soft, wet clay that I chose to ride on. Not the best choice for most bikes, but where this one has its party piece, that front wheel drive, it does feel like it buys you out of those sort of risky situations, and it just feels like a little pack horse pulling you along. I have to say, I have to say, not the nicest terrain, not what I would have chosen for. I've kind of bitten off a little bit more than I can chew here, but it is at least illustrating to me what this bike is capable of and kind of what it's made for. That front wheel felt like it was buying me out of the hole that I've dug for myself in uh, going up to these muddy fields. I don't think this was where he intended me to take this, but it has been quite a, uh, an eye-opener for me. Brakes feel strong, but then you should expect that. This thing weighs absolutely nothing. If we go back to the specs, I can tell you that it comes in at 65 kilograms. So I could pick it up, but that doesn't by any standards mean that I am strong. It just means that the bike is stupidly lightweight, which is great. If you ever get it stuck somewhere, you want to be able to sort of shimmy it out of uh, whatever groove you've stuck it in. Top speed as stated, 30 miles an hour, range of about 120 kilometers. That would be, let's have a little look, if my maths are correct or Google's maths are correct, 74.56 miles and a charge time of about six hours. I believe you can also detach the battery and charge it separate to the bike. That is also quite useful. And then the price starts at £4,350, depending, as you'll probably have assumed, on the battery size that you go for. Crack him. Let's give you back to your own. In short, if you have a use for it, if you can find a use for it, you will have an awful lot of fun. Bye bye. As I say, it is really aimed towards somebody who's doing some light commuting or probably more accurately someone who wants to do a little bit of off-road and they want to bring something along when they're camping or they're out in the sticks somewhere as a kind of secondary vehicle rather than your primary so you can just nip off and go and explore. And for that purpose, I think this thing hits this market very well. Obviously, if you're in the UK and you want to check out this bike for yourself, then speak to the guys from the English Electric Motorcycle Company. The link will be in the description. They occasionally run competitions as well, and the link for those will be down there. Also, thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Ta-ra.